Hi friends. Today I'm going to show you four exercises to support the muscles and bones of your spine if you have osteoporosis or osteopenia. I'm Dr. Lisa. I'm a physical therapist and a specialist in osteoporosis and bone health exercise. And we're going to get started today with four evidence-based moves that help protect you from fracture and improve the strength of the muscles that support your spine. So first off, you're going to grab your stretchy band. You're going to sit up nice and tall or stand. That's fine too. Arms straight out in front of you, heart open and pull that band across your chest, squeezing the wings together in the back, trying to avoid the microphone on your shoulder if you can. Okay. We're doing this slow controlled pull apart, squeezing the wings together, 10 repetitions and giving yourself time to work up to three sets of 10 repetitions three times a week. So that's one great exercise you can try if you want to help support the muscles in your spine. Let's move on to exercise number two. Exercise number two is a row or also I call it a supported row because you're going to use a chair or an ottoman, but a chair would work very well to support one arm, shoulder pretty much on top of that wrist. Your feet can be side by side like I have, or if the weight is in your left hand, the left foot back. Be sure that we have a hinge in the hips with a long spine, not rounding out. So think open heart, long spine as you're in this position. And we're going to pull the weight between our hips and our ribs and then lower fully squeeze the shoulder blade back lower completely. This is called a row. It is a pulling motion and pulling motions are one of the foundational motions for bone health exercise. We do both pulls and pushes and this supported row is a pull. So your goal with whatever weight feels right for you, would be 10 repetitions, slowly working up to three sets of 10 over several weeks, even if necessary, three sets of 10 on each side. Don't forget to do it on the other side. Let's get on the floor or on your bed for exercise number three. Okay. Coming down for exercise number three, we're going to do a bird dog and a bird dog is a little bit more complex of an exercise. It requires you to have a little bit of balance, requires you to be able to get onto your hands and knees. If you can't do this, you can do a version of this using a chair. Uh, but if for the rest of us on the floor, we'll be in this hands and knees position. We want the shoulders on top of the wrists. We want the hips on top of the knees. So we don't have the hands out here so that there's an angle in the forearm. The angle of the arm should be straight up and down and the same for the thigh. We want to tuck the chin and have a long neck. We don't want to sag through the lower back. So we're just going to have a nice straight long spine with the core engaged here. And from this position, and what I do find helps a little bit is to bring the knees a tiny bit closer together, push, the floor away firmly. Try not to wiggle as you extend the opposite arm and leg straight out as far as they will go. Return with as little wiggle as possible and extend the other arm out. Arm and leg that is as far as they will go. And return. Repeat at least five times on each side for a total of 10 gradually work up to three sets of that in your three day a week exercise sessions. Bird dogs, be conscious of that hip sway and that stability. So really tighten down that hip before you lift that leg. So you don't sway over to the other side. We're going to go onto our backs for the exercise. Number four, I'll meet you down there. Okay. For the last exercise, we're doing a classic bone health exercise that targets the back body. This is a bridge. My feet are lined up with my hips and my knees. My back is on the floor. I'm not flattening the back to the floor, but allowing the normal arch that exists there. 
And then if you need support for your head because you have a curve in your upper back, use the least amount of support you need to keep your head level and in neutral. We're gonna take the palms and press them into the floor. And I do this because it also activates the lats in our back, these big strong muscles in our back that are also spinal protectors. So hands press down, feet press down. We're gonna lift the hips straight up, squeezing the glutes at the top and straight back down, maintaining the spinal position without rolling up or rolling down the spine. So we're not trying to curve the spine, we're just coming straight up. Press the hands, press the feet, lift the hip bones, squeeze the glutes, come right back down. Squeeze, release, lift and squeeze and release. And this is called the bridge. It is wonderful for working the glutes, the hamstrings, and the lower part of the spinal muscles. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. When you do those bridges, think about doing 10 repetitions, slowly working up to three sets of 10 in your three times a week exercise routine. And these can be a component of your comprehensive bone health exercise. Remember, we don't want to just target the spine or just target the hips. Your program should be full body, upper body, lower body, core. It should include motions that push, that pull, that reach, that carry, that squat, and that hinge. So every Strong Bones program should be comprehensive should also be working on things like balance for fall prevention and posture for fracture prevention. If you like this kind of information, I include it in my videos and in my programs to help support people with osteoporosis and low bone density. If you'd like more information, please check out my website, drlisamoredpt.com.